don't remember anything else, I want you to remember this. Listen. God can, God will fight your battles. Just keep still. He'll make a way. Save the day. If you step aside, help me say, come on. Hey. God will fight every one of your battles. Just keep Some things I need God to work on for me Some things that I can't do on my own But I need God's help and direction to get me through it John 3 and 30 says He must increase, but I must decrease Step aside If you need a healing in your body And if you need a financial breakthrough a miracle in your family. If you're feeling discouraged, let me encourage you to step aside, step aside. and let God, work. let God work. Instead of trying to work it out on your own, let God, let God work. Say, let God work. Consulting Group is partnering with Deeper Life Church Ministries to bring to Goldsboro and surrounding areas an amazing conference for pastors and secondary leaders. It's Fuel 2020. Fuel 2020. In-house edition happening November 19th through the 21st at Deeper Life Church Ministries in Goldsboro. Fuel 2020 sessions include Flow for the Love of Worship, Turn their church upside down. Church full of crazy people. Ultimate weightlifter. Marketing, outreach, and evangelism. Let's handle business. Leadership series. And I am Abishai. Fuel 2020. Fuel 2020 presenters include Jeremiah Davis, Aaron and Ashley McNair, Sherman Blandin, Justin Marshall, Rashawn Wilson, and Aaron McNair Sr. Don't miss Fuel 2020 in-house edition, November 19th through the 21st at Deeper Life Church Ministries in Goldsboro. Registration begins June 28th, so register now at www.godfuel2020.com. Fuel 2020. Good evening, DLCM family. I pray that you're having a wonderful week thus far and that God is blessing the works of your hand. Listen, I am so excited about tonight's uh, deeper Bible study experience. I believe that God is truly going to bless us through the word of God. I want you to do as we always do. Go ahead and hit that share button so we can get this word out to as many people as we can. I believe God is going to bless us tonight. All right, listen, I need you to First of all, if you are a member of Deeper Life Church family, I need you to make sure that you are connected to our Facebook group. It is entitled Deeper Life Church Ministries Community. It is where all of our members have the ability to connect, to communicate with each other, also to hear from me directly, as well as to uh, join in with our 5 a.m. prayer for this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. 
We are coming together for 5 a.m. prayer just so that we can uh, prove to God that he is priority in our life. And I believe that there cannot be a strong church if it is not a praying church. And so I want you to join me tomorrow, Wednesday, and then Thursday at 5 a.m. for prayer right there on our Facebook group, Deeper Life Church Ministries Community. Go ahead and find that and join in that group. If you're a member of the church, I want you to be a part because God's going to, if you want to be a member, I want you to join because God is going to continue to bless us. I want to say that we are praying for the Brown family. We are praying for the Brown family in the death of Mother Brown. It is amazing that on last uh, meeting that I had with the directors of our ministries and uh, the, some of the leaders of our church, one of the endeavors that I wanted to do for the month of September was to honor specifically the oldest member of our church as well as some of our senior citizens. That was my heart's desire to do in the month of September. And then before we can get to September, the Lord has called Mother Brown home. So we're continually praying for that family and continue to uh, keep that family in your prayers in days to come. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to present to you Lady Ashley, who's going to bring us a word tonight. Now, this word, Deeper Life, is a word that she shared with another ministry, but I want you to receive it as if it is unto you because the word of the word of the Lord is global. The word of God is universal. And so what one, he says to one, he says to the other. And so I want you to receive this word tonight from Lady Ashley. Uh, on this past month, I have myself preached nearly 20 times this month. Uh, and so today I'm going to take a break because tomorrow uh, I am preaching in a virtual revival uh, with some of my friends who uh, we shared together 12 years ago at a conference called the LFC conference that I did in our Farmville location. I want you to make sure that you join me there tomorrow night. So I need you to, after tonight, go follow MMCC Wilson. If you would follow that page and you will join me tomorrow night at 730 as I am bringing the word of God in that virtual experience. Tonight, you're going to receive from Lady Ashley and I believe that God is going to bless you. Let me say this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to the Deeper Life family for what you have done for the community in the month of August. School supplies, my God, and groceries on us. We really did it big and really made a difference, really made an impact uh, to see those cars lined up before the time even started for groceries on us, to see those cars coming through with people in need for the school supplies and we were able to provide. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. As we said in our mission statement that our mission is to impact our city with effective life-changing ministries to make and nurture humanity into disciples of Christ, to usher humanity into economic and spiritual empowerment, watch this last part, to embrace and meet the holistic needs of all humanity. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna start putting that mission statement in all of our live streams and make sure that we are quoting it, make sure we learn it by heart so that it can become the concentration of our actions. Thank you so much for all that you've done. And listen, we made an impact with you being involved, you putting your hand uh, to work, you going to pick up groceries, you going to pick up school supplies. We did it together. And that's how God wants the church to operate together. Uh, and, and more outreach endeavors that we have coming up, let's do it together. Let's do it as one church. All right, we're going straight into the word of God with Lady Ashley tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. Yes. We're going to get ready to dive right into the Word of God. If you're following with us through Scripture, turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. We're also going to be reading Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18 as well. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, And these things, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. 
they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I want to talk really quickly from a subject on this morning that is happening now. It's happening now. Go ahead and type that in the text box. Tell somebody it is happening now. Here's what I've come to discover, that most of us can sometimes operate through a partial belief system. Well, what are you talking about, Lady Ashley? Our minds can be so focused on only what we can see and partially on what we've heard. So subsequently, the supernatural wonders that were witnessed by our forefathers appear to be sometimes unattainable to us. The lame walking, the dumb talking, limbs growing normally again, fatal illnesses being reversed, all these things seem like miracles of the past instead of hopes for the present and for the future. In today's culture, intellectual education has outweighed divine revelation. Therefore, divine revelation has now been moved into a second place status. Let me say that again. In today's culture, intellectual education has sometimes outweighed divine revelation. And now we find that divine revelation has become second place. And sometimes a formal education can discredit our faith because anything that does not make sense or anything that cannot be explained to the human mind, we are automatically trained to reject. There was an author by the name of Guillermo Maldon that stated, Mankind will criticize everything he cannot create or understand. Miracles. Just type the word miracles. Very simple. Miracles. Miracles. The Greek word for miracles is dynamos, which means strength, power. It means ability. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. Miracles manifest God's supernatural power. Miracles are God's sudden intervention into the normal course of our everyday individual lives. Miracles are interruptions of natural laws of time, space, and matter. Miracles are God creating something that was not there before. All right? Miracles. That's our word for today. Let me serve notice to you, just in case you may be thinking otherwise. Let me tell you something. Miracles are not ancient. No way. Miracles are not ancient. They are not a thing of the past. They are not a part of our imagination. They are not some made up fairy tale. However, truthfully, the world that we are currently living in, that we are seeking answers to questions such as, does God continue to do miracles today? Is the God of the Bible 2000 years ago still performing those same miracles today? And what proof can I offer to somebody that God is really performing miracles? What proof do I have to show them and to tell them that the God that I'm singing about, the God that I'm preaching about, the God that I confess my faith about, he's still alive and well, and he's still doing miracles. And who is he performing those miracles through? Who, who has access to these miracles? So in this 21st century faith, we are forced now to kind of deal with the reality of our faith, but also deal with our current status or our current reality in which we live in. Because many people will tell you that miracles are in, they only happen in the Bible days. But let me serve notice to you that we serve a God who in 2020 is still performing miracles. The same God that healed the woman with the issue of blood is the same God that who can heal you today. The same God who opened blinded eyes by spitting in dirt and rubbing it on some a man's eyes is the same God who can perform miracles today. The Bible declares that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If you 
believe that and you can grab that by faith, I dare you to type in the text box, tell somebody, tell your family, tell your friends, tell somebody near you that God is still in the miracle working business. Yes, he is. God is still performing miracles. God's miracles will never go out of style. They will never be outdated. He is still performing miracles. All right. So as a 21st century church and as a ministry where, you know, millennials are now getting involved in the faith, they are becoming more hands-on in church. Um, they are becoming more hands-on in the community. We are faced with somewhat of a daunting task of trying to make believers out of people and out of individuals who will only believe in what can be experienced and what can be seen. Let me say that again. We are now faced with a daunting task, especially when you're dealing with millennials, especially when you're dealing with babes in Christ. We are now faced with the daunting task of making believers out of individuals who will only believe in what can be experienced and what can be seen. Our reality is, is that so society is doing everything they can to discredit Christianity. Society is doing everything they can to discredit salvation and to discredit our religion in general. And so we have to somewhat shift into a culture shift. We have to move into a culture shift so that we will be able to declare from a solid place that we will be able to declare from a stable place and that we have to assume responsibility to grab hold of those who may not have as much faith as we have. We have to shift our culture and to shift our thinking and shift our faith and to be able to boldly declare to those who do not believe like you and to those who do not confess that what you confess that our God is supreme. He is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end. And you cannot be moved by those who are not necessarily moved by what moves you. You, you cannot be leery of those who do not believe in what you believe in. But it is time now. It is past time where we get strong in our faith and we are able to stand flat footed and declare what the Bible says is the mysteries of the gospel. It's past time for you to think that just because you're not a preacher or just because you're not an ordained minister or God has not called you to be in a pastor or an evangelist or a prophet, you have to understand that if you have the Holy Ghost, if you proclaim salvation, if you have been born again, then you have the responsibility to declare your faith. You have the responsibility to tell everybody who is willing to hear you that your God is still saving. He is still healing. He is still delivering and he is still doing miracles. So type right here in this text box, tell, tell somebody it is my responsibility. It is my responsibility. I cannot be moved by society. I cannot let anybody talk me out of my faith. I cannot be moved by what I see. And sometimes I may not see anything. Sometimes I may not be able to experience anything. But do I believe in God? Do I believe in his word enough to understand that though I may not see it, I still believe it. Though I may not see it, I still believe it. We it's time now, like I said, that we're entering into a shift. We are entering into a shift and I don't want you guys to miss it. And I don't want you to think that we're just doing online church simply because we cannot gather, but we are in a shift. And if we are not careful, we are going to miss what God is trying to do in this season. If we are not careful, we're going to be concentrating on where God was and not where he is right now. But I believe that God is shifting our minds. God is shifting our ministries. God is shifting our motives. I believe that God is shifting our passions. He's shifting our desires. I believe by, by faith that he is shifting our finances. God is shifting our family dynamics. 
whatever it is that's not right, I decree and declare that there's a shifting getting ready to take place because some of you have already proven to God that your heart is pure. Some of you have proven to God that God, I really do love you and my faith is not moved by the four walls of the church, but I will declare to the ends of the earth, if I never step foot in the building again, you are still good. God is shifting us to a place where we cannot focus on the things that used to be. But what is God saying right now? What is God saying right now? So I decree and declare that if you will receive it, I believe that there's a remnant of people, even in greater Zion, that God is going to shift. I believe that assignments are going to be birthed in this pandemic. I believe that dreams and visions are going to manifest in this pandemic. I decree and declare that just because we are not able to gather, I speak over your life that nothing shall be withheld from you. If you believe it, I dare you to type in this text box, tell somebody that God is shifting me. Yes, Lord, he is shifting me. And not only is he shifting me, he's shifting everything that concerns me. He's shifting my mind. He's shifting my relationship with my family. He's shifting my marriage. Whatever was out of place, we speak shift over it so it has no choice but to get in place. For us who are hungry, for us who are desperate, who, for us who are not satisfied with the normal, for us who would say there's just something on the inside of me, there's a fire on the inside of me that cannot be let down, there's a fire on the inside of me that cannot be consumed, I don't know what it is, I can't really articulate it, but I won't be satisfied until I reach that place that God has ordained me to be. I'll declare like Paul that I'll towards the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. I'm not satisfied. I'm not complacent. I won't procrastinate anymore. There is something on the inside of me and I'm not going to stop until I am everything that God has called me to be in this earth. He's shifting me. Not only is he shifting me, he's shifting everything that concerns me. So in our text for this morning, Jesus appears after his resurrection to his 11 disciples. Now, prior to his appearance, the disciples had already been told that Jesus was alive and well. All right. First, Mary Magdalene told them, but they didn't believe. Then Jesus appears to them in a different form before two of them who were walking in the countryside. The Bible says that they go back. They tell the others about their experience, but yet they still did not believe. Jesus then shows up for a face-to-face -face encounter with the very ones who should not have needed that much persuasion to begin with. Wow. And that's going to cause some of us to do a self-examination today. We're talking about the ones who walked so close to Jesus, his disciples, the one who saw him perform miracles, the, the ones who saw him and, and labor with him, yet they still did not believe when they saw him, even though he had already told them that he would appear to them again. And so that makes us have to do a self-examination because you have to ask yourself, what the, well, how much persuasion do I need? Why do I have to be constantly persuaded that God is real? Why do I have to constantly be persuaded that God is a miracle worker? Why can I rely on the, on the proof that I've already seen him work? Why, why can I rely on my faith? that says if God did it before he's got enough to do it again why can I rely on my faith that says if God healed before he can heal again we have to monitor and we have to be careful that we don't go about doing life where we stop believing in God just because situations happen we got to be careful that they don't shake our faith so much so that we don't believe God when he say he's going to show up we got to watch and we got to monitor our faith to make sure that we we don't stop believing when God says uh, he's going to open the door even if we feel like he's late we got to monitor our faith to make sure that we don't need persuasion from the same God who's proven his godness to us before. We got to monitor our faith to ensure that we don't need persuasion from a God who's shown us his sovereignty before. I, I don't need persuasion because 
I, I've been there with God. I, I've got history with God. He He's shown up for me before. He's come through for me before. I don't need to be persuaded. I don't need to be persuaded. So Jesus then tells, he continues to tell disciples about the signs and the works and the miracles. The believers will be given the power to perform in his name. He, he's telling his disciples, he's continually teaching them that there's going to come a time where, where the miracles you saw me do and the signs that you witnessed and the works that you saw me do, there's going to come a time where you are going to have the power. Yes, Lord, you are going to have the power to perform that yourself. You are going to have the power to perform that yourself. The message translation states that these, watch, watch what the Bible says in the message Bible. It says that these are some of the signs. These are some of the signs, which would suggest to me that the list that God gave the disciples was not an all-inclusive list. While there are some theologians who believe that these signs were only for the apostles, John 14 and 12 says, Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works shall these do because I go unto my Father. Jesus Christ has already deposited within us the power to make miracles, signs, and wonders the norm. Hear me today. Jesus Christ has already deposited on the inside of every believer. He's giving us the power to ensure that miracles, signs, and wonders not do not become a thing of the past, but become a thing of our present. They become the, a norm for us. He says in Matthew chapter 6 that when we pray, our prayer should be that God's will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's what it says in Matthew chapter 6. We grew up reciting the Lord's Prayer. In that Lord's Prayer, it says that we should pray that God's will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And if God's will is already realized in heaven, then let it be realized in the earth. If there is no sickness in heaven, let it be in the earth. If there is no illness in heaven, so shall it be in the earth. If there is no depression in heaven, so shall it be in the earth. If there is no anxiety in heaven, so shall it be in the earth. If there is no COVID-19 in heaven, so shall it be in the earth. I dare you to whatever you are facing, get it in your mind. And if it's not like God, I dare you to decree in your house, decree wherever you are. If it ain't in heaven, then it can't be on earth. Let it be. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, there is no sickness. So I declare that I'm healed from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. In heaven, there is no dysfunction. So I decree and declare that I'm going to have peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I don't believe we need to be convinced of the wonder working power of Jesus Christ. I don't need, I don't think we need to be convinced. I think that we should be strong enough in our faith. We should be stable enough in our faith. And if you are not, I bid you, oh, that you will get somewhere and get stable, that you will plant your feet on a solid rock and understand that you don't need to be convinced that God is good. You, you don't need to be convinced that God is merciful. You don't need to be convinced that God can still do miracles. But what I do want us to, what, what I desire for us to get, what I desire for us to see is that experience. I, I desire for us to see miracles. I desire for us to see signs. I desire for us to see wonders. Is there anybody who have that expectation to say, I, I want the I want the miracles that took place in the Bible. I want to be able to go to a service and blinded eyes are open. Yes, Lord. I want to be able to experience the miracle working, miracle working power of Jesus Christ. I want, I want cancer to dry up in his presence. I, I want disease to cease in his presence. I want somebody who's battling with depression to leave home healed after being in the presence of the Lord. I want people to understand that in the presence of Jesus Christ, there is no limit to what God can do and what he has done for others. Surely he will do for you. So I don't want us to miss the experience. 
I don't want us to miss the experience. I don't want us to be blind to the fact that even today, even today, May 31st, 2020, God is still in the miracle working business. I don't want the enemy to talk us out of our stance of hope because we are really hungry for God's kingdom to come. I, I don't want the enemy to talk us out of our place of faith simply because God has not come through yet. I, I don't want the enemy to talk us out of our place of thanksgiving simply because we are going through a season of suffering because the Bible declares, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory, yes, Lord, that shall be revealed in us. I don't want the enemy to talk us out of our place simply because we have not seen it yet. Why? Because the Bible declares that God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If God said it, then we got his word on it. We have to have an earnest expectation. The Bible says, for the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The world is waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. The world is waiting for us to take our place. The world is waiting for us to stand flat footed and declare the word of the Lord. The world is waiting for us to declare that God is still performing miracles. The world is waiting on us to declare that miracles are not ancient. The world is waiting for us to operate in the Holy Spirit. The world is waiting on us to to see the Holy Ghost move in the way that we walk in and move in the way that we talk and move in the way that we treat our brothers and sisters and move in the way that we love each other and move in the way that we give and move in the way that we function in our day-to-day -day lives. Creation is waiting. Creation is expecting the revealing of the sons of God. And I just believe that God even now is preparing us for greater. Yes, Lord, I believe that God is preparing us for greater. I believe that he is preparing us for a greater power and a greater anointing. I believe that God is preparing us for a greater hope and a greater revelation. I decree and declare that God is preparing us to be, to have greater effectiveness. I believe that God is preparing us to have greater desires and, and greater influences. I I believe that God is preparing us so that he can open up greater doors and he can set us up greater tables. I believe that God is preparing us for greater opportunities and, and to have greater knowledge and to have greater wisdom. I believe that God is preparing us for greater understanding and greater strength. I believe he's given us a greater prayer life and, and greater consecration and greater operation and greater demonstration and therefore giving us a greater victory. If you believe it, I dare you to type in that text box. Only if you believe it, don't fool me now. If you believe it, just say, he's given me greater victory. He's given me greater victory. I know I might have received a victory in the past, but I decree and declare over my life. I decree and declare over my family's life. I decree and declare over my church. I decree and declare over my finances. Two simple words, greater victory. Greater victory, greater victory. God is going to put us in the place and he longs for us to carry his glory. He longs for us to carry his glory. That's what Pentecost is all about. The Bible declares in Acts chapter 2 when they were all on one accord with the same mind and in the same spirit. That's when the Holy Ghost fell, when they all got on one accord. And if we all make up in our minds that we, if we're putting aside ill feelings, we're putting aside drama, we're putting aside pettiness, we're putting aside everything that's not like God, and we are decreeing and declaring that I have to be pure so that I can carry his glory. I have to be right so that I can carry his glory. I have to talk right because I'm carrying his glory. I have to live right because I'm carrying his glory. Glory. I have to treat my neighbor right because I'm carrying his glory and his glory cannot reside in a contaminated vessel. But you have to make up in your mind that it's for God I live and it's for God I die. I want to carry the glory of God. I want to operate under the guidance 
words of the Holy Spirit. I want to speak in new tongues. I want a new anointing. I want fresh revelation. I want a new, I want fresh understanding of my calling and my assignment. I don't want to miss what God is doing in my life. I cannot be concerned about what was, but I got to focus on what God is doing right now. Why? Because I'm a carrier of his glory. I'm a carrier of his glory. I'm a carrier of his glory. That's why the Bible says in Acts, the Bible declares in Acts chapter 2, He it says that your sons and and your daughters, where, let me find the scripture so I can say it right. Shall, it says, I shall, it shall come to pass in the last days that I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. The Bible declares that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. I dare you right where you are to just lift your hands and I decree and declare right now that the Holy Ghost is getting ready to enter your homes. Yes, Lord. I dare you to lift up your hands. Forget about who's around you. But if, if you have made up in your mind that I'm tired of the ordinary God, I'm tired of tradition, God, but I need something new. I dare you to lift your hands right where you are. And I decree and declare that even though the virtual airways, that the Holy Ghost is going to come and endow you afresh. I speak even over the airways, that from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, the Holy Ghost is going to touch you. Yes, Lord. I decree even over the airways, that even in the city of your soul, a fire of God is going to rest there. A fire that cannot be put out. A fire that cannot be put out. And some of you used to operate with so much fervor and so much passion. But along the way you lost it because of disappointments. Along the way you lost it because you were disappointed in God. Along the way you lost it because now you find yourself in a backslidden state. But hear me today. God is coming to endow you afresh. Yes, Lord. God is coming now if you allow him to invade your space. He's coming now to invade your spirit, to take residence in your heart, to take residence in your mind, to take residence in your body. Why? Because now is a time more than ever where we are serious about what God has placed us in this earth to do. Now is a time more than ever where we are serious about our assignments and we are serious about our dreams and we are serious about our visions and we are not moved by what we see and we are not moved by what is. But our faith says that if I carry the glory of God, then all will be well with me. My faith says that because I am a glory carrier, God is going to ensure that everything attached to me is going to look like victory. Yes, Lord, because I am a glory carrier. Everything attached to me, my sons and my daughters, my spouse and my mother and my father, everybody attached in my bloodline is going to have victory. And I decree and declare, I decree and declare that we will not move, be moved by every wave of doctrine. I speak that you will not be moved. You will not have itching ears, but you will plant your feet and be strong and be steadfast and be unmovable. I decree and declare that you will recognize the glory that is housed on the inside of you. Now is the time more than ever where we understand that miracles are not ancient history. Deliverance is not ancient history. Whatever it is that we are believing God for, blinded eyes being open and cancer being healed and, and disease and sickness bowing at the name of Jesus, that is not ancient history. God can still perform miracles. And if you got faith like I have faith, you can say that it's happening right now. It's happening right now. As a matter of fact, as you're looking at me on this live stream, I am proof that God is still doing miracles. As you are able to get up this morning and to clothe yourself and, and to walk down your steps and to feed yourself, you are proof that God is still doing miracles. As you look at your spouse and as you look at your children, they are proof that God is still doing miracles. As you examine your life and you think about all the times that the doctors had given up 
on you and as you examine your life uh, and look at all the times where you needed a way made but you didn't have the power to do it yourself uh, and God stepped in right in the nick of time uh, you are proof that miracles are happening right now uh, you are proof uh, that miracles are not a thing of the past why because I am a miracle I am a miracle. I am proof that God is still in the miracle working business because if the enemy would have had his way, we would have already been consumed. But thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory and who always causes us to triumph. I don't want you all to be moved by what we see. I don't want you to be consumed with media outlets and, and the things that we are forced to read on the news and the things that we are forced to hear. Hear me this morning. God still has dominion and God still has power. He reigns supreme over everything. Over everything. The enemy may be the prince of the air, but God has dominion over everything. Over everything. And if he cares for the birds of the air, if he cares for the fish of the sea, surely he cares for me. I am proof that God still does miracles. You are proof that God still does miracles. You are proof that God can take treasure and put it in an earthen vessel and use it for his glory. I dare you to type now that it's happening now. It's happening right now. Miracles are happening now. It is happening now. We are not moved. We are not easily persuaded. Miracles, signs, wonders are happening now. That's why the Bible says, the greater works shall you do than I did because I have gone away to my father. He has left it in our hands and we have to be willing. We have to be pure enough. We have to be holy enough to carry the glory of God is happening now. Thank you so much for tuning in to our deeper Bible study experience. I want you to join us in a seed tonight. If you were blessed by the word, I want you to sow a seed tonight that contributes to the way that you were blessed. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. You see the information here on the screen. I want you to sow tonight. Join us in a $20 seed tonight that will bless the house bless our church continue to help us with our endeavors with outreach and impacting our community thank you so much god bless you impact consulting group is partnering with deeper life church ministries to bring to goldsboro and surrounding areas an amazing conference for pastors and secondary leaders is fuel 2020 in-house edition Happening November 19th through the 21st at Deeper Life Church Ministries in Goldsboro. Fuel 2020 sessions include Flow for the Love of Worship, Turn Their Church Upside Down, Church Full of Crazy People, Ultimate Weightlifter, Marketing, Outreach, and Evangelism, Let's Handle Business, Leadership Series, and I Am Abishai. Fuel 2020 presenters include Jeremiah Davis, Aaron and Ashley McNair, Sherman Blandon, Justin Marshall, Rashawn Wilson, and Aaron McNair Sr. Don't miss Fuel 2020 in-house edition, November 19th through the 21st at Deeper Life Church Ministries in Goldsboro. Registration begins June 28th, so register now at www.fuel.com. GodFuel2020.com Fuel 2020 God is gonna do something phenomenal Something incredible, something substantial.